Excel lesson, we are going to look at formulas. Formulas include all your basic mathematical operators, which include addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponents. So as you can see on the spreadsheet, we've got some figures. If I wanted to perform, for example, an addition on, for example, 200 and 100, I could put it in any cell that I want to. Now, it's very important to start off any of your formulas with an equal to sign. If you don't and you just type in 200 plus 100 and you press enter, it's going to stay at exactly that. You will have to double click to edit and add an equal to sign if you want to get the answer. Now you got the answer as 300, but in Excel, this is not an ideal situation. Normally we don't generally use numbers in our formulas. What I mean is basically we use cell references. In other words, we look at where our numbers are. And the reason for this is if you look at our formula bar, it tells you which cell has a formula in it. In this case, it's A4. Our formula is equal to 200 plus 100. Now, if I change A1, I change this value of 200 to 300. It doesn't change automatically. If I wanted to change this answer, I'll have to go into the cell and change the 200 to 300 in the formula bar. This is not an ideal situation. So instead of using the numbers, I go equal to and I type the reference of the cell or where the 200 is. 200 is in A1, so I type A1 plus A2. So now it's going to give me my answer as 300. However, if I now change this 200 to 300, it automatically changes in the cell A4. Okay? So we normally use cell references. In other words, we talk about where the numbers are as opposed to putting in the numbers. If I wanted to do a subtraction on the same numbers, I go equal to. If I don't want to type A1 plus A2, I just click on where the number is and it automatically puts in the cell reference for me. So I go A1 sorry, subtract A2, and that is going to give me my subtraction. So my subtraction button looks like a little line. If I wanted to do a multiplication on B1 and B2, again, I will start with my equal to sign. I can click on B1. My multiplication button looks like an asterisk, and it's above the number 8 on my keyboard. And I click on B2. So B1 times B2. I press Enter, and I get my answer. If I want to do a division, I go equal to. Click on what I want to divide. Use my backslash button, because my backslash is my division and choose my second number. So equal to C1 divided by C2 is going to give me my answer. I can also use an exponent. So if I actually go equal to, this time I'm not using any of my cell references, by the way. I just want to see the results of an exponent. So I've got equal to 6. And I can go to the power of, and that button over there is actually found above your number six on your keyboard and you hold down shift to get to it so six to the power two and it's going to give me my answer so those are my basic formula or my basic numeric operators which is addition subtraction multiplication division and exponents so if i have to now go to formulas Excel has orders of precedence, meaning it works out 
certain aspects before others. What I mean by this is Excel follows BODMAS. So if we look at this function that we have right here, okay, it's going to work out what is in brackets first. So first it's going to work out the brackets. The second thing it's going to do is it's going to work out this exponent. The third thing it's going to do is do the multiplication. And the fourth thing it's going to do, or the last thing it's going to do, is your addition. So see if you can figure out what this answer is. So let's try and do it together. 23 plus 4 is 27. 3 minus 2 is 1. 6 to the power 2 is 36. 36, you're going to keep in your mind for now. So 23 plus 4 is 27. 27 times 1, still going to be 27. 27 plus 36. You can use your calculators for that. It's going to give you 63. And that's basically how you would work out order of precedence if you do see a function that looks like this. As we can see, we can see what this formula looks like in the formula bar. So now we're going to talk about relative and absolute cell referencing. And just to give you an idea of how that's done, I'm just going to put in a few figures randomly so you can see what I mean. A relative cell reference is one that's, that we would normally use, so equal to A14 plus A15. It's called relative because if I click on the answer and I put my mouse pointer above this full handle and I drag it across, if I click in my formula bar over the 600, I notice it changes. So it changes to work out the answer over here. So I've got A14 to A15. If I drag it across, it's B14 to B15 in my formula bar. That's known, or these are known as relative cell references. An absolute cell reference is if you decide to lock your values or lock your cell references. In other words, you want to lock this answer. You use your dollar signs to get your absolute cell reference. So once you've got your absolute cell references looking like this, if I now click on 300 and I drag it across, it's not going to give me 600, it's going to give me 300. Why? If I click on this 300, it's A14 plus A15. If I click on this 300, A14 to A15. Notice it didn't move. It's no longer B14 to B15 anymore. So what do we do with absolute cell references? We use them to lock certain values. And that's extremely useful. Well, maybe not quite in this scenario, but for this scenario over here where we want to work out the VAT. So when we're working out the VAT, we could go equal to B5 multiplied by, we know 14% is sitting in B2. So it's going to give me the right answer. However, if I click on it and I drag the full handle down, it's giving me a series of incorrect answers. Why? Equal to B5 times B2, that's fine. It's giving me 140. If I go to the next one, it's saying B6 times B3. We don't mind this moving, but this we don't want it to move. So if you click on the next one, B7 to B4, B5, B8 to B5, we want the B2 to remain constant. And to do that, you need to make it an absolute cell reference. So one way to do that is to add the dollar signs. A useful shortcut is if you want to make something an absolute cell reference, click just before your alphabet and press F4 on your keyboard. And automatically, it puts in the dollar sign so you don't have to manually do it. So now if I click on 140 and I go to this 
small square on my fur handle. I drag it down. It's giving me my correct answers. I know this because if I click on each one of these, I notice it's B6 times B2, B7 times B2, B8 times B2. So my B2 is remaining constant. So that's my relative cell reference here, the one that keeps changing. My absolute is the one that stays fixed. So please make sure you know your differences between relative and absolute cell references. These are most of the time pretty popular test questions, so I suggest you guys do learn it.